Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Care and Bridging Pastor Dan Slagle, who just finished up part five of our series, Unshakable. Welcome, Pastor Dan. Thanks. Yeah, the, what a great message um, and a great finish to this series looking at how can we have an unshakable faith. Mm -hmm. um, I love that you took a different kind of look at a classic story from the Bible of um, Daniel and the lion's den. Mm -hmm. And I think you made a lot of really fresh and relevant points for the culture that we're living in now. We did have a few questions come in. Great. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right in um, with those. So for this person who wrote in, it seems like God is providing the opportunity for them to influence people from their past. Okay. Um, and they're having a hard time reconciling that. Sure. Um, is it as simple as just trusting God? How, how would one go about that when you have a friend group right. maybe whose influence would influence you a different way? How do sure. you go about influencing them? Sure. Well, the short answer is very carefully. Um, Particularly if a person is a relatively new Christian, uh, it is so easy to slip back into patterns and habits uh, that we really don't want now to be a part of our life. And I think in some instances, if, if, if we know that that is a more than likely outcome, we need to entrust those people to other missionaries and believe that God has someone a little more objective to reach them. Now, on the flip side of that, uh, in my own situation, once there was some distance, I'm talking like a decade <laughs> in my life, I was very much able to enter back into that environment, not be phased in the least. We'd all grown up a little bit for one thing and present a clearer, uh, more mature witness that I think was more effective in the long run. So I, I would look at factors like your own maturity, your own ability to resist temptation, uh, the ability of the audience to receive. You know, Jesus did say, don't throw your pearls before swine. And uh, not that no one is unworthy of receiving the gospel, but sometimes people just aren't at a place where they're wanting that. So using that kind of discernment, tread carefully. Good. That's a good word. So in the, in the message today, you talked about God not being able to use uh, unclean vessels. Okay. There's a little confusion around that for one of our listeners who asked the question. Could you just speak more into that and clarify that for us? Yes. So on the one hand, we are all unclean vessels. All of us sin, all of us are in need of repentance and forgiveness and, and starting over. When I say that God uh, won't use an unclean vessel, uh, He can't use an unclean vessel, I'm talking about someone who is in unrepentant, determined sin. You know, they, they know they need to repent. They know they need to make that change, but for whatever reason, uh, be it an addiction or stubbornness or the devil, it, they're not leaving it. God cannot use that kind mm -hmm. of person. Uh, but I think when we approach him humbly and uh, as David does in Psalm 51 and seek his forgiveness and his cleansing, we are then made ready to serve. Right. Good, good. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. And so we did have another question come in. Um, and I think when you're talking about living in Babylon, um, there is sort of a bridge that's built between faith and politics and the culture. And so this person asked, how can our church bridge the gap mm -hmm. between those, both faith and politics, um, and not allow politics to determine our behavior in addressing others or rejecting them when the Word of God demands that we accept people? Yeah. Well, that's a great question, especially as we are entering into the presidential primaries and all of that stuff. Um, Jesus calls us to be salt and light in the world. That means we are qualitatively different from the world. There's nothing wrong with 
having a political persuasion. Uh, we all do, whether we can identify it or not. But we cannot then collapse the two and, and make our faith synonymous with any political partner, any political entity. I mean, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So I don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat, or somewhere in between, none of those are representative of the kingdom. If your primary goal is to be a representative of the, of the kingdom, then the easiest thing to do is just leave politics out of it. Mm. And by that, I mean not simply out of your conversations, but be willing to step back and ask yourself, okay, am I wrapping my Christianity up in this party's platform? Am I wrapping myself up in the flag? If that's what you're doing, you, you need to unwrap yep. and step back and let God speak truth into every political entity and party and make your first loyalty to the kingdom and then secondarily to whatever your politics may be. Good, that's a good clarification. Um, what a great end. I love how Thanks. you said our faith shouldn't be just unshakable, but unstoppable as well. And so uh, thank you for a great message thank today. You. Thanks for being here with us. Sure. Um, thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.